My little pony, my little pony. Die, 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 die! Hello everybody and welcome to Provost Gaming and Hearts of Iron 4 Equestria at War. Don't click away! Give me a minute to explain, please! So I've been getting requests to try this mod out for a while now, and I've always said that I'll look into it, but obviously I'm hesitant to play it because, I mean, it's freaking My Little Pony. Do I really want to deal with the obligatory PROVERSES OF BRORY CONFIRMED comments down below? No, not really, because it's totally untrue. Though I will admit I probably know a bit more about My Little Pony than any well-adjusted adult should. Now that said, I did decide to start looking into the mod last week, and what I found is pretty surprising. This mod is not just some meme mod for the lols, it actually is pretty in-depth, lots of detail, clearly made with love. It honestly might be one of the better overhaul mods for Hearts of Iron 4, on the same par as Old World Blues, Kaiser Reich, and many others. Never expected that, but that's what it certainly looks like to me, so we're going to try it out today and see if we can have some fun with Equestria at War. It's either going to be amazing, or it's going to be a total cringe fest. I don't really know. Either way, it might make for some pretty good content for me. Now, for those of you, by the way, who are going to be like, Oh, but My Little Pony is for girls! Well, yeah, it probably is. But guess what? I am progressive enough to believe that even a little boy who wants to play with Barbies can still maintain his masculinity, okay? As long as his idea with playing with Barbies is finding creative ways to chop off its head. That's how you preserve your masculinity. We're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna try to rack up as big of a body count of the ponies as possible. It's totally masculine if you get them all killed, right? Pretty sure? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so we have Equestria, of course, as a major nation led by Princess Celestia. Don't want to do that. It's probably the most in-depth national focus tree, but it's also the one that we want to kill. Ah, uh, let's see. The Crystal Empire, Stalingrad, which I think is just a hilarious name. Uh, the Changeling Lands, which I've been told is a bit more like fascist Germany. It's a bit faster paced and a lot more aggressive, which is probably why we're going to play them today. Apparently, there's also deer, griffins, and other folks in this world. I don't know how that exactly fits into the lore. Yaks? Minotaurs and stuff? Yeah, they all exist. Apparently there's a huge continent that developers actually created specifically for this mod, so there's a lot of stuff that doesn't belong technically in the MLP universe, which I'm fine about and don't know anything about. But apparently they have been very creative. Anyway, we're going to be playing as the Changeling Lands led by the evil Queen Chrysalis. A fascist ideology, a fascist regime, Queen's leadership is our ruling party, that should be kind of fun. Not too long ago, Queen Chrysalis and her changelings launched a daring invasion to take over Equestria and its capital of Canterlot. Fortunately for the Equestrians, it was mouth disaster. This defeat only intensified the changelings' hatred of ponies, which I can sympathize with significantly. Using this anger, Chrysalis has successfully gathered near-universal support for her cause and unified all of the hives to her rule alone. Under her reign, the army has seen radical and rapid modernization with the introduction of modern firearms, vehicles, and tactics. The time is ripe for a new war, and this time the changelings may finally achieve their ultimate victory over their enemies. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's see, Canterlot defeat apparently increases my uh, stability and my war support and uh, protects me from ideological drift defense. So it basically is revanchism. People really do not like the uh, the Equestrians because we lost that initial fight. It does mean apparently that uh, we aren't very likely to have allies though, so that's a problem. Political divisions. I thought we had near universal support. I guess we're gonna have to figure that out. Changeling Griffonian Attaché. Army experience gain. Land doctrine research bonus. Armor research. Well, that sounds pretty nice. I mean, I like having some free army experience from the get-go. That's awesome. We have to unite the nation, we have to long live the queen, we have to lead the armies, there's a lot of things to do. So these are the Changeling Lands. And this is the unique map that has been created for this particular mod. There's Equestria down here, our mortal enemies, they're obviously pretty strong. Apparently there's something like the United States, a bit of a sleeping giant, once you do provoke them, they become quite pretty powerful. So we're going to want to take over as much of the continents as we can before we attack them, and then just grind them into the dust. Let's go ahead and get started with a new game, and I'm going to show you a lot of the uh, additions that have been made for uh, governments, for research, and so on. It's its actually pretty cool. Let's see. We do have a uh, description of the region here, so kind of a lot of the history. Can't say that I really care about that. I mean, it's fun and all. If you really care about My Little Pony, I do not. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna ignore this, but kudos to the mod developers for putting in that much detail. Here's some information about the region. So it tells you a little bit about um, kind of our surrounding area, our neighbors, what kind of situation we are currently in. I'm not going to read any of this right now either. I think we'll figure a lot of that out. Here's a description of some of the unique mechanics for Equestria at War, though. So this is pretty important. So Equestria at War apparently has 
Uh, a fork of expanded technology industry equipment by great experiment. So uh, I guess they've got uh, some extra some extra coding that allows for a lot of different research and technology, which is pretty awesome. It does introduce a whole new resource, so crystals, which you'll have to use to produce magical equipment, which is a bit more powerful than regular infantry equipment, but also is less reliable and a lot more costly. Uh, we also have a race system. So there's five races, Pony, Changelings, Griffin, Deer, and Unspecified. And I know that each race has their own unique technology. So playing as different races actually does mean some variation in your playstyle, which is pretty fun. Uh, let's see. A bit more development. We'll talk about that in a second. Nuclear warfare changes. If you want to have nukes, you need to have crystals. If you run out of crystals, you can't make any nuclear bombs. You need 12 for every nuclear reactor. I would totally love to create nuclear crystal bombs and beat the snot out of Equestria with that. That could be fun. Here's something really awesome. Operation Paperclip. After a country has been defeated in a war and a peace conference has ended, the victors will have a chance to receive a one-time 50% research speed bonus to technologies that the loser has researched and the victor has not. That is awesome! I think they should add that in the base game. If you capture some stuff, you get to study their technology and maybe reverse engineer it. I think it makes a lot of sense. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab all of our troops, send them into an army. We have 24 to begin with. That's not bad. We're going to set up against the Kingdom of Olinia, who are the deer people, I believe. King Johan Jivulin. You're going to have to freaking die. Uh, let's see. We need to get a general, field marshal, blah, blah, blah. Uh, do we have any field marshals? We do. Trimmel, level 4. Okay. A panzer marshal and politically connected. Promotion cost reduction is okay. Not great, though. Pick that up. And then for a general, uh, Hermes, thanks be you. Ah, increased chance of assault and shock tactics. That's kind of fun. Let's see. Infantry division defense. Do we want defense? Max entrenchment. Looking for some really good perks here. All right. I think for now we'll stick with uh, Hermes. Well, actually, you're really good at planning, but not very good at executing anything. You know what, we're actually going to go for you, Pharynx. Let's try you for now, time being, and see if that's any good. So we're kind of like dark ponies. We are changelings, I believe. Which means we actually do have a unique unit for our faction, but I'll cover that in just a moment. Let's start by looking at some of the government and the political situation. So a lot of the laws, research and production, military staff is exactly like you are accustomed to seeing. There's also this little thing down here called development. So you can have a scientific base, and right now we start with developed science because we are a relatively modern nation. Other nations in the game, though, might have a uh, substantial or a small or a non-existent poor science base, and the result is it greatly reduces your research speed, but to rebalance the game, you get a bit of extra political power. So that's kind of interesting. You can try working up to being a bit more developed. The polar bears, for example, over here, would have a small science base. Equestria would also be pretty modern. The tribes basically have nothing at all. So that's one way of kind of differentiating the different factions, and it is not meant to be balanced and all kingdoms are equal and can just be played uh, a little bit a little bit differently and still actually win. Like, some nations are just terrible. They just simply are undeveloped and horrible. There's also a modern society thing here. So if we look at development for societies, we are modern, which is nice. You also have outdated industrial sectors, agrarian, tribal, detached, and all of these have different... I wouldn't say perks, really. Most of them are downsides. You want to be modern, if at all possible. So we're up there with modern. That's great. And our race is the Changeling. You can never change this. It's just one race. But this is what unlocks the Changeling-specific research tech. We are also led by the Queen's leadership, which is fascist. There is communism. There is harmony, which I guess replaces democracy in this game. Uh, but it's not exactly democratic. It's still a monarchy of sort. And there is non-aligned. The Changeling King. There's a king? Ooh. That'd be kind of fun. Anyway, all right, let's take a look at the research, though. So a lot of the research is pretty familiar, but you'll see that it's actually a lot longer. The game expects you to go for several more years than in Hearts of Iron 4, so that's pretty fun. Look at these guns. Holy crap, that looks modern and terrifying. I love it. There are such a thing as magical weapons in this game, though. So you have your basic infantry equipment. You also have primitive weapons. If you're a pretty, uh, a pretty pr backwards nation, you won't have access to proper infantry equipment. But... If you do research the regular infantry equipment, you can also get these magical weapons, which is where your crystals are used. These guns are better in almost every way, but they have a reliability that is greatly lower than basic infantry equipment. So it is entirely possible that your guns just break on you. If you can produce enough of them, maybe you'll be fine. And that unlocks the magical infantry unit, which I think also is just better in general than infantry. But we'll have to experiment with that later. I'd like to have a magical army. We'll be fun. But the reliability factor, eh, if we don't have enough production, that's going to be a problem. Uh, let's see, support companies, this is all normal, but again, just expanded. Armor, there's a lot of different tanks available here. It's very similar, but again, expanded. 
going down toward the uh, ultimate modern super heavy tanks down over here with the leopards. That could be pretty fun for us. We do start with some light tanks. I like that. We probably will upgrade to the panzers and stuff a little bit later. These appear to be actually based off of the German models, if I had to guess, which is interesting. Artillery, again, all the same. Doctrines, all the same. One thing that's weird here, you'll notice that uh, there are pony symbols for pretty much everything else. Divisions and training. Uh, there's a paw instead of a hand for production. But for some reason with doctrines, there's humans. Don't know why, because the background art is totally ponies. So that's fun, I guess. We start with mobile warfare. Do I want to stick with mobile warfare? I don't know. We'll take a look at our production uh, um, setup and see if we can actually support a lot of tanks. Come back to that. Ships, pretty much the same. Uh, doctrines, definitely the same. Air, about the same as well. Same doctrines here. Engineering, very similar with a couple of main exceptions. Once you get the nuclear bombs, you can also research naval power, which unlocks nuclear subs and nuclear battleships and I think nuclear carriers as well. So that's kind of fun. And then you can unlock the thermonuclear experiments, which is even bigger bombs. No idea how those work. They must just be really, really good. I want to nuke everybody, so that sounds excellent for me. Industry. Again, very similar to what you're expecting. Just a heck of a lot longer. And here are the race-specific techs. Changeling technologies. No one else in the world has this. We have access to a special unit called Jaegers. Jaegers require a bit of pony power instead of manpower because it's all cute like that. I don't know how these compare to regular infantry. We'll check that in a little bit. Apparently, they have pretty bad defense. So maybe these guys are only good for offense. I don't really know. They are really good at fighting in urban environments, which uh, might actually mean that we have a slight advantage fighting in cities. I guess we are changelings. Maybe we can infiltrate them. That'd be kind of fun. So we can upgrade a special unique unit. I've never really seen unique units in a game like this that are faction specific. So that's a pretty cool change. And then there's special war or research and development here. So specialized factory drones, extra factory output. Strong. Resource gain. Lots of entrenchment and uh, fort construction. Uh, Non-core pony power. Oh my gosh, 15% is amazing. Love extraction. That makes sense if you know anything about Queen Chrysalis. Not that I know anything, but I know a little bit to know that that matters. Love refining, advanced breeding techniques. Infiltrator companies. That's kind of cool. So you unlock a special company type. These are very good at fighting in fort against forts and in urban environments. So that's kind of nice. Uh, let's see, and then you can specialize them a little bit further too with tactical infiltration. Uh, chaos, confusion, concealment, social engineering training, or maybe you want to go for strategic infiltration, chameleon cloaks, spy networks, massive impersonation. All that stuff seems pretty good. Honestly, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with all of this. So we may come back and try some of these a little bit later. For now, let's get started on the basics. We do want to have our research speed. What is central range finding? I have no idea what that is. Let's go ahead and get started with our basic setup there. Uh, we need to get our basic machining tools. We need to get some construction tech. That all seems fine. Let's take a look at construction. Nothing new down here. Uh, how many factories do we start with? Not enough. We need more civilian factories. I'm going to go ahead and build them up here. Um, I would like to get at least up to a 15 line if possible. We have absolutely abysmal infrastructure in a lot of areas. We're going to have to build up uh, as much as we can. Okay. So if I build just a few more civilian factories like this, that should be enough, at least for the time being. And then we'll build some infrastructure and a lot more military factories. Speaking of military, what do we need? Um, well, let's see. Our armies consist primarily of some form of infantry and militia. We have some Jaegers, some tanks. Okay. So we probably should go with our standard setup of some extra infantry equipment, support equipment, and artillery. Um, we will need more of these tanks. Probably do not need these bombers. Actually, going to go ahead and get rid of those entirely then. We are producing some subs. We're producing a lot of subs. Why? I don't really know. Um, more artillery, I think. That seems okay. We'll need to either extract more resources or we need to trade for things. Let's go ahead and trade with Stalingrad. At least for a little bit of their steel like so. Okay. Seems fine. And there's the crystals right there. We do have a few of those sitting around. Perfect. For our free dockyards... I kind of want to play the proper naval game, if we can. Which means I need to build a proper navy. Do we even start with a good navy? I don't think we start with any navy at all. Oh, we do. We, no, we do. Here we go. What do we got? We've got a bunch of submarines, and we have a single strike cruiser force. Okay. No, that's, that's probably good. So we'll continue building some subs, and then I think we need to build some more destroyers for now. So we'll start with this. Eventually, though, we will want to build some light cruisers and so on. Of course, now we are once again completely out of steel, so we're going to have to ask for just a little bit more. Uh, maybe not that much. 
There we go. Okay, looking better. All right, national focuses. This is where a lot of the fun comes in, because obviously we have a complete tree, and it's actually pretty substantial. Uh, I think Equestria has the largest national focus tree. You can support various different civil wars and completely transform the country. Uh, for us, I don't really know what we want to go for. It looks like we only have a couple of options. We can go for Finalize Reorganization, which gives me a Doctrine Research bonus, which is nice. We can also get rid of some of the national focuses and get some pretty nice uh, uh, cost reduction for all of our leaders. Political power gain, planning speed, order and discipline, changeling school of war or griffin school of war. Hmm. Not sure what we're going to want there. Let's start up here with either Thoraxian betrayal or destroy Thoraxian resistance. So what is this? We are fully independent. We are fascist. Harmony supporters under Thorax will eventually rise up, which removes political divisions, or destroy the resistance. They will not eventually rise up, so we don't have some sort of a um, civil war. But we do have countrywide raids, which I don't know what that does. I kind of want to get rid of the political divisions. I'm going to take the long path and hope that we can handle whatever civil war ends up coming up against us. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that route. Let's go up to um, speed 5. Can I please get to speed 5? Thank you. One thing that's really cool, by the way, just a little attention to detail thing. Um, there is an entirely unique soundtrack specifically for this mod that developers have come up with. And it's actually got like a lot of content. Like a lot of different songs. It's not like it matters that much. It's just really cool. I'm really impressed that they did that. Orders from the Queen! The Queen has issued the return of the Changeling Griffonian expeditionary mission, including the two commanders, General Thranks and Marshal Synovial. She believes there is no need for the mission anymore, seeing as how changeling efforts would be best off directed entirely on Equestria. Recall our attaché. Well, what was the point of having that at the beginning, then? I don't know. Okay. Well, no, it's still there. Is it going to go away? Reorganization in the armed forces. Ouch, that's costing me a lot. Hard to train new troops like that. Oil import substitution, refinery construction speed. Ooh, okay. So we become self-sufficient on that route. That seems pretty helpful. All right, well, we're going to continue focusing on building up some civilian factories. I really need to start ramping up my uh, econ economy as much as we can. Uh, we have a bunch of troops that are moving down here toward... Switch over here. Toward the right, deer awesome. people. Uh, we would love to get to Hjortland and take them out at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a front line that looks kind of like this, if at all possible. I don't know how strong they are. Um, they've got 9 or 16 troops. Oh, we're way stronger. Yeah, sooner we can find a way to go to war with the Kingdom of Alenia, probably the better, as long as Equestria does not interfere, which they might, they also might not. Uh, take a look at this, by the way, the Kingdom of Yak Yakistan. It's just hilarious. Look, it's a freaking yak. It's so cute. I love it. Anyway, uh, so this is, by the way, the other continent. I was talking about this with the Griffonian Empire. This is actually kind of cool, at least my understanding of it. So all these orange countries, you'd think that this would actually be one solid nation. It's not. It's actually the Griffonian Empire, right here, led by Emperor Grover V. But these are all separate independent countries, technically. They're like duchies that serve the Empire. So they're all part of the Empire, but they also have their own individual rulers, who all have their own different agendas, and may or may not break free of the Empire, and the Empire has a hard time keeping together. Pretty cool concept, actually. It's like having rebelling duchies in the CK2. I think it's a really clever idea. Something kind of similar goes on over here with the River Republic, which apparently are some ponies on this continent. I don't freaking know. Um, there should be, like, some bird people that are not griffins down here, I thought. Uh, somewhere there's, like, kind of a Mussolini-like character from Italy, and you can have some rises uh, going on there. I don't know. We'll see how the political situation develops in this continent. We're just worried about taking out our hated enemies, the Equestrians, okay? I don't really care about much else. Buffalo chiefdom? There are buffaloes? That's hilarious. A coup attempt in Lake City. I don't know where that is, and I'm not sure that I care. So we're just going to ignore all that. Uh, let's just keep moving on with the Thoraxian betrayal. So political divisions. Yeah, 0.5 political power gain kind of sucks. Also reducing recruitable population, also consumer goods, also stability and war support. It just It's really good to get rid of this. I don't know how big the threat is later, but I'd love to get rid of it. Der Jaeger. That's funny. The friendship games. Blah, Barf. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try really hard to pretend how much I absolutely despise My Little Pony, but it's actually kind of cute. It is. It is for little girls. It's not something I would ever, like, watch. I have no problem with my daughter watching it, though, if I had one. Because it's just it's a cute little show, and sometimes the songs are a little catchy. The Emperor is dead. That looks a little like Hogwarts at first, and then it's totally not. After a long 40-year reign, the Griffonian Emperor Grover V passed away in the Imperial Palace. 
After a brief period of utter chaos in the capital, a proper Regency Council was established to guide and care for Prince Grover VI and protect the Empire. So there's going to be a little baby Empire, little baby Griffin, who's going to become the Emperor someday. This is where you start seeing a lot of the political intrigue in the Griffonian Empire, and a lot of people have their own agendas and want to start breaking apart. I actually think a playthrough here could have been a really fun uh, experiment, but it also might have been a little bit too complicated, and also, also, a little harder to use Griffins in the thumbnail that nobody will recognize, whereas Queen Chrysalis, apparently a recognizable character. I can use that for a good thumbnail art. All right, national focus is done. Let's go for long live the queen. Uh, we get, or rather our leader gets a new effect, the changeling queen, daily political power gain, stability, war support, and justify war goal time. That seems pretty helpful for only 21 days. Yes, let's absolutely make our warmonger queen better. AI modifier focus on offense. That's kind of funny. Yeah, if there's an AI, it's just, it's gonna be aggressive. There he is, Bicolini. Yeah, wonder if he's supposed to be reminiscent of anybody we might know from the real world. He doesn't look like a griffin, though. Looks a little bit like a vulture. Anyway, let's go and get started with some more research. We want to go for mechanical computing. The Thoraxian Betrayal. With supporters for harmony and friendship growing larger and larger within the hives scattered across changeling lands, it was only a matter of time before those upstarts thought themselves too good for the strength and unity of the queen. Thorax and his supporters, as well as numerous detractors of the Chrysalis, have all united under the banner of Harmony. Numerous hives in Volastad, Antax, and Serinth have pledged their allegiances to Thorax, embracing the values of Harmony, Friendship, and Peace. We shall embrace Harmony and get rid of Fascism, or we will come for you soon enough. They officially start a civil war. Oh, fun! Okay, well, we gotta deal with this now. Changeling lands. Uh, where's my army? My army is scattered a little bit. Okay, hang on. I need you guys to get over here and quickly crush them. Okay, I didn't realize just how big of a civil war this was going to be. I didn't even realize there was a civil war. This is just this was just me experimenting. I've never played these guys before. I didn't do my research, apparently. Uh, let's have all of you guys, real quick, hop over here. Okay, we'll worry about fighting against the deer people later. I just want to solidify my hold of this area. We need to get rid of the frickin' hives. Unassigned divisions. Uh, you get over here. Okay, anyone else? I think that's it. Should be everybody. Um, you don't have anything too much ice. This region is called too much ice. That's that's hilarious. All right. Yeah, everyone get up in position. Um, you need to set up some front lines to go to Sorinth, if at all possible. I don't know. We have the numbers, I think, right? Oh, no, it's a pretty equal fight. Is that Thorax? He looks stupid. An outcast among the hives. He's one of the first supporters of Harmony. We don't like that peace and Harmony crap. No! I'm going to freaking kill all of you. Quickly, guys, get in position. Uh, you start pushing up this way. We're going to see if we can cut him off. I don't know if I can. Maybe this is stupid. But we're going to freaking try while we really de uh, we deploy as quickly as we can. Don't let him get to Vesalipolis. Vesalipolis? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to be called. By the way, real quick, Stalingrad also has a city called St. Peter's Hoof. I'm just saying. And there's Trottingham. I'm just saying, there's just some cuteness involved in this. It, it's it's kind of fun. Uh, you guys, quickly get up over here. I need you guys to quickly encircle this guy and get him killed. I just want to clear this out so we can free up some more troops. Should be relatively easy. Um, oh, cool. There's actually, like, different icons. They actually are ponies. Oh, my gosh. This is sickening how dang cute this is. All right, let's go ahead and um, hit you here. Long live the queen. That's done. Aid for workers' families. Get a civilian shot. Also a 60%, uh, sorry, 66% research bonus for industry unlocks the Populous Support Program. Or subsidize entrepreneurs, three civilian factories. I think we can do both. So why not? Let's just go for as much industry and uh, civilian factories as we can. How are we doing in terms of machine tools? 24 days to go there. Uh, we do have a few decisions. The Queen's C Tower. The highest building in the country is under construction in the city uh, center of Vesalipolis. Vesalopolis. Uh, the eye is confusing me there. A pyramid-shaped tower of concrete and glass, 400 meters in height, is designed to entwine and conceal the former spire of the hive. The building is supposed to represent might and power of the one queen and the changeling nation. It will become the residence of Queen Chrysalis as well as the whereabouts of various government branches. This will allow for better management and organization of the state as a whole. Construct the tower. Uh, current ruling party, once it is no longer fascist, this is not an option. So if you spend power, we can start the construction. If this is anything like Stalingrad, which I did for my um, my test game, uh, this may require several uh, several button presses and actually need to get the completion of the tower, but 
That should be kind of nice. National Spirit. Defense on core territory, construction speed, civilian factory speed, political power, building slot. Oh, uh, okay. Seems fun. War propaganda about changeling lands. Well, we don't need war support, so that's fine. Factory conversion, we can ban different ideologies. Vesselopolis Tile Company? Nah. Military training, you can just spend some of your command power and political power if you want to get um, army experience. Ten of it. That's not even too bad. Okay. Yeah, um, we might want to start construction of the tower at some point soon. In the meantime, though, let's just go ahead and start pushing these guys back. You guys are already heading up there. You try to counterattack and push him the heck out. Um, am I going to be able to win this civil war? I really hope so. Let's start pushing forward wherever we see an opportunity. You probably are relatively weak. Can we win this fight? Nope, he's already retreating. Can you assist here? There we go. Should be fine. Do I have any planes or anything? I do, actually. Hang on. We should be using this. Okay, hang on. Let's group all you together. All you go over here. Okay, got all you. Group. Okay, so we want to do air superiority. And what do we have? Bombers? We'll do close air support in, let's say, this region. Okay, just try to make sure we win this fight. Uh, I don't know if he has any planes of his own. Probably. We should not be pushing here. Let's instead start working this way. Looks like he has a lot of his troops on the southern border. If we can get a good encirclement here, that would actually be fantastic. Maybe you can start pushing down this direction, around Volistad, and see if we can actually push him out of the way. All right. So you guys, I'm going to have one of you turn around and actually help him here, just so we can get him killed. Uh, there's one troop here, but again, he's stuck with nowhere to go, so he should die pretty quick. All right, these guys are going back up to the front line. Perfect. So they're gone. You've lost two troops, and I haven't lost any, so now we're sending our people up here. Uh, you're getting a little close for comfort around my capital. Let's see if we can, like, sneak around here or something. We're faster than he is using the motorized, so if we can get a quick encirclement right here, for example, that would be pretty cool. Can you assist? Yep. Let's see if we can do that. And have you come over here as well. We'll flank him. Flank him good. You guys are going to head up this away. We're going to try to cut off some more people. Just really screw with them. Speaking of cutoffs, I may have slightly messed that one up. Hang on. Let's see if we can get you over here. I want to go this way. Just make sure we don't lose anything. I cannot afford to lose anything in this Civil War. Oh my gosh, the freaking hoof. It's just so, so freaking cute. Uh, we have the dockyards who are no longer working on, I guess, subs and stuff. Let's go ahead and fix that. Build up some submarines like so. Uh, we're not producing any of our motorized and stuff because we ran out of factories because of the Civil War, but that'll that'll fix soon enough, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, are you guys actually, like, winning this fight? Let's take a look. Okay, you don't have a lot in the way of defense. I should not expect the same numbers uh, that I'm used to in Hearts of Iron 4. That may not be the case. Let's see. Seem to be doing okay here. He's got a tank. But if we're quick, we might be able to get, like, an encirclement on said tank. I want you to go here. Basic machining tools is done. Excellent. Um, concentrated or dispersed industry? Let's go for dispersed, because I've actually found that I kind of like that better than usual. This tank might just actually be a problem and encircle me if we're not careful. Um, can you get down this away? You guys do something kind of similar. Get down over here. Again, more cutoffs would be nice. Actually, he's about to cut me off, now that I think about it. Uh, okay, slight problem. We're having a little trouble actually doing anything here. If he gets my capital, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Let's have you guys go start pushing this guy down. He's going to have no organization. We should be able to crush him. You guys get up over here. Quickly, please. You guys... Can we possibly cut off this tank? We need clever encirclements. That's the only way we're going to win this. Okay, you stop with what you're doing. You guys go up this way instead. We're just trying to go around them so we can figure out what we're doing. Okay, these guys we should be able to cut off. The Siege of Vrax. This day marks the end of the Siege of Vrax after the surrounding of the area has been captured. The massive hive city was put under siege. Queen Chrysalis resolved to not pull out the city's many civilians in an effort to spur the Changeling army to fight harder against the enemy. This only made the battle more costly as the Changelings resorted to using gas attacks at close range to give any advantage they could muster in the close quarters urban combat. Uh, wow, alright. You know, I think the genocide actually might be a thing in this mod, which is horrifying and hilarious. Uh, can't easily push back against that tank. We should be able to finish these two units off pretty quickly, though. Let's go ahead and actually help here, make sure we push these out. Subsidize the entrepreneurs, done. Let's go for aid for the worker families. 
Uh, you guys right, should be so getting up to Sorinth right. pretty soon. Can you guys also oh, push up towards Sorinth? Can you push his motorized out of here so that they don't come back and get me? You guys push down this way. You guys push down this way. We're going to surround these units. Every unit we can quickly encircle is just going to make my life a lot easier. The County of Longsword declares a war. Okay, so there's some civil wars going on somewhere. You guys need to back the heck up and get Vrax back before you get cut off and die. Civil war, Longsword, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I'm aware. Okay, we got that. The tanks are still pushing around. He's heading this way. Okay, we've been cut off. Push this way. You go here. Keep pushing. Just throw him off balance. Don't let him go anywhere. Okay, so that's a couple more of his units gone. Uh, you should be down to about 13 troops. How much longer until we can win in the Changeling Civil War? 56% of the way towards capitulation, huh? Okay. Um, you have no supply. We should probably move you into friendly territory. You head to these victory points behind his front lines. You cut him off. Okay. Should be able to cut off all these units. Come on, get in there. There we go. All right, so now you attack here and you attack here. Should be able to win that. His motorized are getting pushed, so that's fine. Jaegers are in the back line. Volastad over here. Can we get there quickly? Possibly. Let's see if we can trap this unit. He's got no organization. You head down this way and see if you can get a quick encirclement around these infantry. We move way faster than he does. He's got no organization, so he's running away. Honestly, fine. Go grab victory points in that case. And then turn around, head up this way, and try to get to Volastad. Go around his tanks, since we're apparently having some trouble there. Okay, you go grab Vrax back. These guys are going to die, so that's another unit done. You're heading over to Hurord. I don't freaking know. These tanks head down toward Volastad. We'll see if we can sneak attack them from above. Okay, you still need supply desperately. Let's see if we can assist and bring you back into the fold. We are getting some army experience out of this arrangement, which I'm pretty happy about. Jaegers, how much stronger are you than they are? Uh, he's got a fair bit of entrenchment, so probably not all that strong. Um, how are we doing in terms of air support? Probably don't need all these guys over here anymore. I think I can reach over this direction. Let's go to the Mire Lands and see if we can assist in these fights with some close air support and bombers. You should still be able to try pushing to Volastad. All I need to do is make him capitulate. I don't care if you run out of supply. Just go quick. Go quick. Go quick. Go quick. Got it. Construction tech is done. Uh, you are... You should be capitulating at the end of the day. Unless I am muchly mistaken, but I don't think so. Well, maybe not. Hang on. Get up here to Sycorus. We'll grab that back real quick. Uh, we have a research bonus. Do I want to go? I want to go for the early construction tech so we can start building up our economy a lot faster. So let's go ahead and use that ahead of time bonus. And we win our civil war. Perfect. All right. We're going to take all states, bring them back into the fold. What do you mean I can't just take them all? I'm the only war participant. Oh, freaking pass. Take and turn. Done. All right. There goes the civil war. That is done. Now we can focus all of our efforts on once again killing the kingdom of Olinia. Thank you all for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. Give it a chance, guys. It might end up being a really, really good mod. Everything I have read from people who have actually played it said they started expecting it to be a meme and have a laugh, but actually got really engrossed because it's amazing. I'm very hopeful. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to that notify bell as well if you want to see my future content. And I, as always, will see you guys next time.